those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in his divine plan and find strength in his presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with him. Remain blessed as you listen. That there are four major assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. I want you to write it and please never forget it. No matter how many times you've written it, write it down. Prayer, according to scripture, has four major assignments in the life of the believer. Number one, the first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for growth and transformation. In order of priority, this is the highest assignment of prayer in a believer's life. Unfortunately, most people have not tapped into this possibility that you gain mastery by evolving to superior levels of yourself, even in the place of prayer. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. Say prayer. You can grow and you can be transformed in the place of prayer. I show you a believer who does not engage in prayer consistently, forget about mastery. You cannot gain mastery in this kingdom if you ignore prayer. And if you do not understand the assignment of prayer to your life, growth and transformation. Jude, Jude 1 and verse 20, the Bible says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Prayer builds the believer. Prayer can turn a weak you into a strong you. Prayer can turn a very timid canal you into a spiritual version of yourself. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Number two, I just want to touch it quickly so that we'll move to the other one. Making requests and obtaining promises. This is the second assignment of prayer from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises every time you want to make requests and you want to obtain promises the platform for making this happen is prayer philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god making requests and obtaining promises number three very quickly the third assignment of prayer in your life is for spiritual legislation what is spiritual legislation decrees creating possibilities in the place of prayer decrees creating possibilities job 22 and verse 28 please give it to us quickly job 22 and verse 28 thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon your ways. It, you shall decree a thing. It happens in the place of prayer. Numbers 14, 28. Numbers 14, 28. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do unto you. Not just as, as much as you desire, if you speak in my ears, I will do it just like you have said it. Making decrees, obtaining promises, then spiritual legislation, and then number four, warfare and intercession. The last dimension and jurisdiction of prayer in the life of the believer is for warfare and intercession. Ezekiel 22 from verse 29 to 31. Very quickly, Ezekiel 22. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. 30. And I sought for a man among them 
that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. He said, but I found none. As a result, 31. He says, therefore I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way I have recompensed on their head, saith the Lord. These are the four dimensions of prayer. I've done this teaching. I'm, I'm, I'm reminding you for this series. That if you want to gain mastery in this kingdom, you must understand prayer. You must understand prayer. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. And that at any point you pray, you are doing one or more or all of these four things. Engaging in that which makes for your spiritual development. Obtaining promises. is like cashing a check in the realm of the spirit. In the place of prayer. Number three, making decrees and establishing realities in your life. Number four, engaging the ministry of warfare and intercession. At any point you go to pray. These are the things that are captured in the prayer life of a believer. Unfortunately, please look up. Many believers do not pray. Not for transformation. Not as a platform to obtain requests and make petitions. Not even to make decrees over their lives. Maybe they do a bit of it in church. And largely, most believers do not engage in the ministry of warfare and intercession. No wonder the life of many believers remain defeated in spite of the fact that they are zealous for God. They love God with all their hearts, but they continue to find out that nothing in their lives is a capture of the grace, the wisdom, the power of God. You must tonight make up your mind that for to honor my desire to strive and to rise to the point of mastery, I must engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle. As a lifestyle. Prayer as a lifestyle. Not a strategy for disaster management. Prayer as a lifestyle. For most people, conditions have to provoke you to pray. A negative report and you quickly come to pray. And Satan knowing that when he wants to attack you he will not make the thing look so bad because it will call for emergency and you go and pray so he will allow gradually gradually until your prayer life goes cold and he will attack you in one day and you will be surprised understanding prayer i believe in the power of prayer i am a product of the ministry of prayer we must submit ourselves to the ministry of prayer. You must obtain grace from God. I pray that you will believe the things that I'm teaching you. That a believer who is determined to pray with understanding. Please take note. With understanding. I submit to you that in the body of Christ there is a lot of zeal. People pray and pray. And even if you are God, the way you see people pray, you are wondering, why is this person's life like this? I can tell you that most of our prayer is not guided by understanding. For many believers, we think it's the stretch and the energy invested that is equal to results. It is not so. Most believers do not pray according to scripture. Most believers do not pray according to knowledge. There is such a thing as praying amiss. Have you read it in scripture? Apostle James said, it is possible for one to pray amiss. He says, let that man not think he will receive anything from the Lord. Prayer. That every time you bow your knees to pray, do you know how much of a blessing you will be if people know that your prayer really works? So when you tell them, I want to pray for you, they are happy. There are many people, if they say, I want to pray for you, they just laugh at you because they know that you have not even sorted the subject of prayer. You don't even understand what you are saying. Change that narrative with determination. God wants the average believer listening to me to get to a point where you don't just pray, but you understand the jurisdiction and the assignment of prayer. Whilst you are seated in one minute, I'd like you to just begin to pray and obtain grace from God. You are seated inside, you are seated outside. Obtain grace. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Father, I obtain grace. I obtain grace to find my prayer altar back 
in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Someone is praying. She prande kaskede la hasibash, magata prande gede belekosiata. I obtain grace. I can pray negative things out of my life. I can pray the will of God into my life and destiny. You want to strive for mastery? You must understand prayer. 